Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Digital Citizen. I'm Professor Gregory Golda here at Sacred Heart University. In this episode, our students have divided into three groups to investigate current issues they felt compelled to expose. Aaron Gibney and Charlotte Grenz interviewed students on campus to see if they experienced any discrimination connected to race, sexuality, gender, or any other identifications. Hi, I'm Charlotte Grenz. And I'm Erin Gibney. And today we're going to be focusing on the struggles of identity in our generation and how we as a society need to take pride in our individual selves. Inclusivity within diversity can be improved here at Sacred Heart University, and we want to be a part of that change. Today we're going to be interviewing some students and faculty who have maybe dealt with discrimination and if not, have definitely felt included with no discrimination against them. We want people to come to Sacred Heart and know that no matter your race, ethnicity, sexuality, gender, etc., you can feel safe and included around campus and in the classroom. I know that I've definitely experienced some discrimination on campus and off campus, especially because I am mixed with my mom being Jamaican and my dad being white. So a lot of times I don't feel like I fit in one group. And here at Sacred Heart, it's very hard to fit into a specific group or even try to like find your people with the campus being only 10% minority. I know that some teachers also favor certain groups of people, especially when the whole classroom is majority white. Sometimes I feel like it's hard for me to speak up and talk about experience I've been through because a lot of people don't understand that. But now let's hear from some other people who have dealt with similar experiences and other forms of discrimination. Hi, my name's Arnaya and we're both freshmen at Sacred Heart Don't University. Figure it out. I chose Sacred Heart University because they had a really good sports program that I was interested in, in addition to academics, and I wanted both that in school and it was out of state. Once I was in class and my professor actually didn't take time to fully read my name completely, she just called out the first thing that came to her head. As you know, as I said in the beginning, my name is Arnaya and she didn't really care to look at the spelling, so she called me Amaya in front of the whole class. But I was too embarrassed to, you know, correct her, so yeah. I am on the cheer team and as we know, the cheer team isn't the most diverse. They're, you're looking at all of the diversity right here. So. <laughs> You know, obviously I had to look into it. People were saying that it's a good environment, you know, it's a safe environment for people who look like me. And then, you know, I did feel welcomed and everything. And then later on, probably like a couple of months in, I find out that there was some racial comments made by one of the people on the team. And it was a whole thing. They were, they ended up still being on the team. And that just makes me feel unsafe at times because, you know, I feel like that should not be welcomed here, but it still is, you know, it's still here. Would I change it? Yes. To make other people feel safer. Will I tell other freshmen, I will warn them and be like, hey, it happens. It probably will forever will happen. And how do we change that? I don't know. It's gonna take a lot more than just like welcoming in more people of color. It's something that you have to change like systematically. Is that the word? I don't know. There's already groups here to try to fix that, but like it takes more than a small group to make a difference on a campus. Why did you choose Sacred Heart University? Um, Sacred Heart had my program that I wanted to be in, which is fashion marketing and merchandising, and they also offer cheerleading. What is your ethnicity? I'm mixed. I am Native American, Italian, and a bunch of other stuff. Do you like being a pioneer? If not, have you ever been discriminated towards or seen discrimination on this campus? Personally, yes, I have. I don't feel as if it's targeted towards me, but I've seen it happen and heard about it happening. And I am friends with people who have been discriminated towards. My name is Mark Bossy. I graduated from Sacred Heart University in 2021. And um, I chose to go to Sacred Heart because of the theater program. It caught my eye when I was a senior in high school. And it was kind of a no-brainer for me to go. I was a little bit scared of it being a Catholic institution. You know what I mean? Um, but I loved being a pioneer. Um, and I specifically found that sometimes it was great for being a gay individual like myself. But however, though, I did find that sometimes at Sacred Heart, it was hard to bond with certain organizations. Um, I did have a lot of friends in Greek life, for example, but um, I do think that the demographic at the school 
tends to be one that isn't that accepting of the gay community. But in general, uh, I appreciate and I love how much Sacred Heart does for things like that and to be inclusive. And that's why I did love being a pioneer so much. One thing that I do credit President Patillo with so much is I think he's an amazing president and I think that he does everything he can for all students who attend Sacred Heart University. But I think Sacred Heart is a representation of the world and I just think there's a lot of work to do in terms of issues regarding racism and issues regarding um, homophobia. It's like, it, it it's as much of a Sacred Heart issue as it is an issue in the world. Like it's just there and it's blatant. Um, and I do think that kids need to be held accountable more for incidents that happen on campus. If you have witnessed any kind of discrimination on campus, speak up. As a community, we should be working together rather than against each other. Contact these groups to get more information and to get involved in raising awareness to stop discrimination on campus. Thanks for listening. I'm Charlotte Grenz. And I'm Erin Gibney. Now we move on to our next segment, the SHU Media Bias Check where students Tomas Keck and Matthew Eichenbaum sit down to discuss the recent problem of news bias in our society. They even take a look at how this news bias has affected the recent crisis in Ukraine. Hi, my name is Tomas Keck and welcome to Media Bias Check at Sacred Heart University. With all the information available to us through the internet, it is sometimes hard to tell what sources are reliable. Now more than ever, the media is filled with bias. People have the tendency to only believe in the sources that confirm their own beliefs. This means that oftentimes they won't take a deeper look into where the information came from and whether or not it is reliable. AdFonts Media provides us with a chart which places different sources on a scale from left untruthful to neutral and over to right untruthful. This is a great resource for anyone wondering if an article they found is reliable. We have taken a look at sources from each of the sections. What we found was incredibly surprising and informative. Some of the most popular news sources that we believe to be reliable fall under a leaning bias and varying reliability. However, these sources have grown incredibly biased as our political climate becomes increasingly polarized. <laughs> we bring in extreme news expert Matt. Matt, tell us a little bit about the extreme bias in our news today. I'm going to be talking a little bit about news sites that post information not based on fact and are not reliable, such as Humans Are Free. Now, this is a far right leaning site where they post a lot of opinionated sources, and it's a lot of people who have just taken the time to write news. You know, people like you and me, regular people, not journalists. Now, the same goes on the left. There's a site, The Jimmy Dore Show. This is a left leaning side with a similar type of thing. Guys like you and me writing what we think, posting it as a fact. So these guys aren't credited media journalists. No. Right. This is just people's opinions. And you know, for them to be credited as news sources, that's not good. We right. can't have that. Right. Do you think it's kind of dangerous? It's incredibly dangerous to our society. I think, you know, people love getting their news from the internet, you know. We've gone from a you know, completely paperless society now. You know, the bias in our media affects the way that we see different events around the world. A most recent example, you know, comes with this uh, conflict in Ukraine. You know, the first article that shows up when you Google the Ukraine war is one from the New York Times. Now, this is a reputable outlet. You know, that's good. But on the other hand, there's an increasing amount of people, like I said, who are getting their, their news from social media. Right. And these are not usually the most reliable sources. No. You know, you're not going to find, you know, good quality articles on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok, on Snapchat. You know, oftentimes people share their articles, you know, people, you know, read their articles only based on that title, you know, you know clickbait. It is up to the reader to take a deeper look into whether or not the article contains that trustworthy information that you know we all should be getting. And most people do not take that extra step. That brings me to another question, because I was thinking about this too. Do you think a good two sources of media that people can go to to get both sides are like maybe the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal? Because I know New York Times is central, if not leaning a little bit left. And then the Wall Street Journal is quite the opposite, it's central if not leaning a little bit right. Do you think if people pair news outlets like that, it's a good reliable source? Oh yeah, you're definitely gonna find truthful, factual information. You know, the most neutral place you're gonna get your news comes from sites like the AP, Reuters, places like that, that it contain no bias. But you know, getting a good dose of news from both the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal is gonna give you a pretty, pretty confident sense of truth. 
I think. With the increase in people who get their information and news, the White House decided to take advantage of the opportunity to adapt. They briefed a large group of TikTok stars about the war in Ukraine. The articles that shared information comes from the Washington Post, another source that falls into the reliable section of the scale. The use of TikTok to provide this information shows how news transforms and adapts throughout the years. However, we need to stay aware of the fact that bias will follow wherever we go. This generation has been blessed and plagued with tons and tons of media. You know, we have it on our phones. We can access information wherever we want from whoever we want. So it's important that we take charge in looking at nice, reliable sources. Yeah, you must look at all the facts. It's, it's important to not just click on what you believe in, yep. but to get it from every single side and to make sure that you're finding the truth. Yep. Well, Matt, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. This was Media Bias Check at Sacred Heart University, signing off. Our next Digital Citizen News team has taken a deeper look into how college students at Sacred Heart University are getting their news about the current invasion by Russia into Ukraine. They performed on-site interviews in the Frank and Marissa Martiri Center for the Liberal Arts to get a closer look at how careful students are being and where they're getting their news from. Take a look. While this generation is considered one of the most social media obsessed, it is impacting the reliability of the information that we are consuming. Students in Professor Golda's Media and Democracy class at Sacred Heart University's Communication Department have explored the social impact of social media on people through their interactions. With the war happening in Ukraine, we were curious to see how college students are getting their information about these current events and if those sources are reliable. You know, this is kind of considered the first digital war where everything is being captured. So when did you hear first hear about the Ukraine and what news source did you hear from? I think I saw it on like Apple News, like I got the little notification. Um, Instagram, I've seen a lot of Instagram pictures and TikTok. Like so I saw it on Instagram. Right? I think oh. it might have been like Instagram or something. Well, what news source do you feel like is most reliable to get your news about Ukraine or updates going on? Um, probably like news articles, like the New York Times or Washington Post. Okay. Do you trust these news sources? I do not trust Instagram. Um, I mean, I don't really think it's reliable, but like, depending on who you follow, you can get some solid information. I don't know if it's real or not. You don't know. Do you ever go out and fact check it and make sure it's correct, or do you just kind of go with what you see? Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't really like do any fact checking. The most I'll do is like, like talk to my friends, be like, what did you see? What did you see? And that's kind of it. But I would like, I usually don't tend to like find out for myself if it's true or not. I look at like the New York Times mainly, like Washington Post, um, the Guardian. Reuters, like, you know, some international, like, see what's going on. We also have to be careful that the sites that we do like or uh, follow are legitimate because they will put information into your social media feed that is erroneous and it could be dangerous. We hope this made you think more about where you're getting your information and making sure what you are reading is reliable. For Professor Golda's students, this is Digital Citizen. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Digital Citizen here at Sacred Heart University. On behalf of my team of Digital Citizen students, thank you for watching.